Hi, my name is Glenn and I am from Drumfeng. Today, we'll be talking about Chinese percussions. Under the Chinese percussions today, I'll be telling you and sharing with you a little bit more on the types of Chinese percussions. Broadly, there are two branches in the Chinese percussion family. Firstly, the drums. Secondly, the bronze or metals. Under the drums category, we will be using the Chinese term lei. So lei means, literally means category. So drums is called gu. So gu lei means drums category. Under the drums family, it comes in peached as well as unpeached percussion. Now, when it comes to unpeached drums, which is the standard drums that we have every day and use on a regular basis, it would be the da gu, which means big drums, the xiao gu, small drums, as well as the bian gu. So these are unpeached because there's only one tone to it. If you talk about one that has many tones, it would be the pai gu. So the pai gu is almost like the toms, and it comes in tunable format whereby you can tune the drums to specific tones for you to play special, specific notes. And now in the bronze or metal family, it comes in a few subcategories. So firstly, we have the cymbals. <clears throat> in cymbals, we call them as cha or bo. We have the gongs, and gongs we call it as luo. And then finally, we have one that is called the nao, and nao means bells. Under the cymbals category, we have the xiao cha, which means the small symbols. We have the da cha, which means the big symbols. And we have the zhong cha. Zhong cha means the medium sized symbols. When you talk about the gong category, the gong, once again, is called the luo. The luo family comes also in different sizes. We have the xiao luo, which is the small gong. We have the da luo, which is the big gong. And then we have those that are really huge and it comes in different kinds of shapes and sizes. Generally, if you have the English term for it, it's called the tem tem. And in Chinese, we call it the da di luo, or literal translation, the large low gong. Then we talk about the bells. I would like to introduce you now to the nao lei, which is basically talking about the Chinese bells. An example of the bell category would be the bian zhong. Historically, this is the oldest form of pitch percussion instrument that was being found long, long, long ago. And this comes in huge sizes. So it comes in different kinds of tones and is being often being played by different people with hammers or with locks or wooden poles. I would now like to introduce to you this instrument right in front of me here. So this is the Chinese da gu. Now da gu directly translates to big drum. Now, the da gu is an umbrella term for two kinds of Chinese drums. So, one of them is called the hua peng gu, which means a flower pot drum because it has a distinct shape of a flower pot. Now, the other drum that you see right in front of you is also called the da gu. However, this is a different kind of a shape. This is actually barrel shaped. And most of our Chinese drums are actually mainly in this kind of shapes, except they could be in varying sizes. So, this is one of the standard sizes that we have, as well as those that are really huge. Okay, so you can actually play them in two different styles. So one is, as you can see, being placed on a stand on the ground. The other way is actually suspended on a stand and you have to play it in this way. Okay, so now I'm going to show you a little bit about this Chinese drum or the Chinese da gu itself. So I'm going to play once uh, whereby I actually play the drum, the center of the drum together with the H. So I think everybody will know this tune. This is a standard Chinese lion dance tune. Now I would like to play another one, which is a traditional uh, piece that we call Long Teng Hu Yue. Okay, so basically it shows you me hitting the drum on the center and focusing on this thing which we call the rim shot. So here we go.
second here, the centre with the edge and the centre with the rim shot itself. Now the taku, this term, actually means any kind of the big terms I was referring to. So the hua pengku is also called a taku. This taku is also called a taku. And a lot of times you see this term taku in a lot of uh, scores, music scores. So you have to always ask the composer, the person who writes the song, which taku specifically would they want to use for that piece? Because although they are both takus, they both have bassy tones. However, they have different timbers. So always be uh, willing to ask and make sure that you always get the right instrument for that specific piece. And now here, we have another family of the Chinese drums. This is called the Xiao Tang Gu. Now, Xiao Tang Gu literally means a small drum. So, what's so special about this drum as compared to their cousins? So, number one, it's actually much smaller in size, which means when I hit it, it actually produces a very bright tone. So, have a listen. And you can also play it on the edge. So this is the Chinese Xiao Tang Gu itself. Now because of its high tone, this Chinese drum or the Xiao Tang Gu is always used in festivities, playing at the fast rhythms together with the Chinese gong as well as the Chinese cymbal. I would like to introduce you to some of the rarely seen drums in the Chinese percussion family. So one of them will be called the waist drum, or in Chinese we call it the yao gu. Now, this drum is special because of its size firstly. It is not just barrel shape, it is actually a long kind of a barrel shape, cylindrical shape actually, and it's being hung normally around the waist. So tight on the body and played on both ends of the skin. So normally when you see this kind of drums, uh, it's actually mainly in rural China. And back in those days when there were so many festivities and people actually carry the drums around and play with them. Not very much in Singapore context though, because as you can see, we normally use those bigger drums. They are very much more common uh, in terms of uh, when we play Chinese music in that sense. Now there is another traditional flat drum that is called the Shu Gu or directly translates to book drum. And the reason for it is being so is because it's actually used more for a kind of an art, a performing art, which is known as narrative, singing and drumming. So basically when somebody plays this shuku, it's placed on this little stand, one hand holding a stick to play some rhythms, on the other hand is to hold a wooden clapper. And what they do is they say poems, they sing stories, and they do this as a form of art form to entertain crowds back in those days. And now I'll be sharing with you a little bit more with this drum in front of me right here. This is called the Bian Gu, or directly translating to flat drum. Now the use of this drum has been popularized because of a very famous Chinese traditional folk percussion music from China. And the, the song is called Rolling Walnut, and Chinese is called Gun He Tao. So let me just play a short excerpt for you, so you understand why it's pretty popular. So this is an excerpt from Rolling Walnut. I would now like to share with you a little bit more about this special peach percussion drum that we have in the Chinese percussion family. It is called the Pai Gu, or rather, if I were to direct translate it, it's called a row of drums, okay, or a set of drums. Now, this specific instrument normally comes in a set of five or even up to six, and it's being used a lot in a percussion on Zom. As, main, as a main act, as part of a soloist instrument. Now, as I said, it comes as a five-tone piece and normally goes from uh, high to low. So our highest drum tend to be on the left side, flowing down to the low drum on my right. And sometimes for soloists, we use this because we need to have some kind of melody, some kind of pitching in some of our, in some of our music. Uh, so in terms of uh, performance-wise, it's at least a little bit more melodious when it comes to drums rather than just playing unpitched drums all the way. 
Technically, most of the times we use it as a 5-piece kit. Sometimes, or in many occasions, we also use it as a 10-piece kit. So we take two sets and put it together, tune it to 10 different pitches, and we perform it as part of a soloist act. And now we will talk about the lion dance drum, or in Chinese we call it the shi gu. Now this is very popular in that sense whereby everyone would know about this drum because why we see it during Chinese New Year being played during both lion and dragon dance. However, it has since been readapted to be performed not just as one solo drum instrument but as an ensemble. And one good example when it comes to such an ensemble would be the 24 seasons drums which basically is having 24 of such of the shi gu or this lion drums, 24 pieces of it to signify and represent the 24 Chinese seasons. Now, a lot of people would think that the 24 seasons drums come from China. However, it originated from Malaysia itself. So very close, very near us here in Singapore. And aside from this, people actually use this a lot when it comes to the performance of uh, choreography. And uh, it is a very good example whereby if you go to YouTube or if you go to see a 24 seasons drums, you see 24 people exactly playing in choreographed motions, so it is quite a sight to behold. Now the shi gu produces a very unique tone, that is very loud ringing, somewhere between the mid to the high tones, and this is when they are being struck by the wooden mallets. So these wooden mallets are, tend to be a little bit thicker than the standard drum, standard ones that we use to hit the pian gu, uh, as shown. So you use these sticks, you hit it on the edge and mainly the open tones on the center of the drum to produce this very high pitch, low to mid ringing kind of a tone. I would like to share with you this bronze instrument I have in my hand and this is called the Xiao Cha or it belongs to the Cha family. Now when we talk about Cha and we talk about Cha in terms of it having another name to it which is called Bo, so you can call it a Xiao Cha or a Xiao Bo itself. Because the Chinese were really good with metallurgy, it makes sense for them to be able to create musical instruments such as these two. Now, what is a xiao cha or xiao bo? Basically, as you can see, it's this shape with a hole at the end of it. So when we want to hit it, you basically have this pinch and you just... This is how you play the xiao cha. Now, you notice that the pitch of it is quite high pitch. Well, these are actually very popular back then for use during like religious processions, ceremonies, Oprahs. So these are definitely a must, a compulsory to have in such occasions. So we have the Xiao Ta, which literally means the small Chinese symbols, and it's the highest pitch sounding ones. We also have the Zhong Ta and the Da Ta, which means the medium symbols, as well as the large symbols. And this basically means that based on the size, you are able to produce different pitches too. So the smaller the symbols, the more higher pitch it is. The larger the symbols, the more resonant and more sizzling the sound you can create when you actually crash them together. I would now like to share with you another member of the Chinese percussion family, and that is the Chinese gongs. Now, these gongs are really, really special, and you might even say indispensable to the whole history of Chinese percussion in China itself. So as you can see, I have some gongs right in front of me here. They are typically made of bronze and as you can see, disc shaped. The Chinese gong come in varying shapes and sizes and up to today, due to the amount of variety there is, we are unable to fully catalogue the full range of them that are still in China. Now I'd like to speak to you and share with you a little bit more about the three main gongs that we use in Singapore actually. So the first gong that we see very commonly is called the Da Di Luo or literally the giant gong itself. So this gong is also, in English, we call them the temtems. Now, when you strike the gong, this temtem itself, you have to use a giant mallet, a giant mallet that has a padded head. So when you swing and strike the center of the gong, it is supposed to produce this really low, resonant tone that is very reminiscent of uh, when you hear during the war days, it goes as a kwa and it just goes on and on and on and echoes and covers so much space. So that is the temtem that everyone knows about. And next, I'm going to move on to the two handheld gongs that we use very commonly here. So the first one I'm going to introduce to you is this here. So as you can see, it is made of bronze, it's in this size, and there's actually a string attached to it where you're supposed to hold it in one hand with the mallet on the other. So this here is called the Da Luo, 
or what it generally means is is the big gong. Okay, so when I say big gong, it's different from the really large one called the temtem. This one here is meant for holding in your hands. So how do you hold it? As such, you just slot your fingers through, and there you go. Okay, the mallet to use to be used for this is this here. As you can see, it comes as a padded mallet. So you hold your stick and you basically swing to hit the center of this gong. Have a listen. Now, this is an open tone that we have here. However, if we want to mute it, you simply just stop it with the palm of your hand. So, as such. If you're playing really, really fast, and you just want to do something like a staccato hit, normally you can play it such that you tap and hit, tap and hit, or sometimes you have to muffle it with your body itself, where you have to press it against your body. So one of it is your... The other one, we will actually hit it and mute it against the body. You actually can are able to mute it immediately if you were to press it against your body. So this is the Da Luo. So putting this aside, we will move on to the other gong. So this, as you can see, is slightly smaller in size. Okay, so this is the Xiao Luo, which is also known as the small gong. Now, these are being used a lot, especially in operas. So these two actually, as I was uh, showing you earlier. And these two, because however, the timber for both gongs are a little bit different. So this is going to be much brighter. And you can hear this inflection in the sound of it. So how do you actually hold this gong in the first place? So very simply, if you're able to, some people do it in this way, where they pinch it like this. Okay. However, the actual way of holding it is to just let it sit on your finger, your index finger like this way. And try to balance it. And how do you actually hit it? You hit it with this wooden plank here, as you can see. Now, there's a special way of holding the wooden plank in this way. And when you hit, you have to swing the tip of the wooden plank into the surface of the gong. And it's supposed to produce an inflection in terms of the sound. So have a listen. So this is the small gong. How do you actually mute such an open tone? Very simple. As you can see, it's balanced on my index finger. What do you do? You use your little finger to actually mute it, as you can see. So I'm going to hit it, and then I'm going to mute it with my little finger like this. So if I were to play it on cross section, as you can see. So this is the Chinese small gong. Hope you guys enjoyed the range of Chinese percussion instruments that I have showed you and have fun learning them. <laughs>